Now we want to talk about uh, praying effectively. How we can pray so effectively the prayer skills uh, we can develop to pray effectively. And the first thing is that our prayers have to be based on the word of God. Because the word of God is the final word. God does everything according to his uh, word actually. And the word of God is the last word on everything. And we know about Jesus actually. Jesus fought the devil with the written word of God. And he is our example. And we as his uh, disciples must do as he taught us to do by his example. We read in uh, Matthew 4. Every time the devil said something to him. You see, he said something back, out loud, you see. And he quoted the word of God saying, it is written, it is written, it is written. And so he quoted the word of God, you see. The word of God is the final thing on every situation. And so our prayers have to be based on the word of God. Secondly, a clean heart gets heard by God, you see. We need to have a clean heart so that God can hear our prayers actually. We read in uh, Psalm 68, 66 and verse 18. In Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And so that's the very reason you see, we need to have a clean heart. So that there is nothing that can hinder God from hearing our prayers. Or nothing that can hinder our prayers from reaching to God. Again the Bible says in uh, First Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. This is what the Bible says in First Peter 3 12. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open to their prayers. See what Bible says. That the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. The Lord watches over the righteous. He looks at the righteous. He keeps his eyes on them. And watches them. And watches every, every move that they take. Not only that. The Bible further goes on to say in this verse. That his ears are open to their prayers. You see his ears are open to their cry. If I am allowing unholy things in my heart, through my imagination, then the Lord is not going to hear me, you see. But if I am righteous, His ears are open to my prayers. The problem is we are always hopeful, fighting unholy things, trying to enter our minds and hearts. And as a result in our own strength, we are not righteous. What we need to do is we have to live holy lives, righteous lives through the power and enabling of the Holy Spirit of God. That is how we have to do it, you see. We cannot live righteous lives in our own physical strength. We cannot because the standards of righteousness of the living God according to the Bible are so high. And that's the very reason we need the help of God. We need the help of His Holy Spirit to help us to live according to the Word of God. I do not want to talk to empty sky, you see. I want God to hear and answer my prayers. Don't you also? Yes, we need God to hear and answer our prayers. There needs to be someone who can hear our prayers and answer them. See, praying without results is no fun at all. It's no fun at all. See, praying and watching God answer is a, such a thrill and a kick, you see. It's such a joy and marvelous joy when we can see that the Lord is answering our prayers. It increases our joy to such a level that we can rejoice in the Lord always. Now, you see, effective prayer is not an option. It is vital. 
it is vitally important that we have an effective prayer life. You see, effective prayer is not an option. Always get clean, you see, before praying. And that's why we need to be clean, you see, when we come to the Lord in prayer. This is what Bible says, you see. In Psalm 51 verse 7, Purge me and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Purge me and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And that's the reason, you see, that when we come to the Lord, we can ask Him to cleanse us and wash us. And He washes us and cleanses us and gives us new life. Isn't it so marvelous? It's amazing, you see. It's a great thing to be washed and cleansed of the Lord. Again, we read in First John chapter 1, verses 8 to 10. First John chapter 1, verses 8 to 10 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. See what Bible says. If we say that we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And then in verse 9, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. The only thing that is required is that we come to Him and confess our sins and He will cleanse us and give us new life, you see. And then again, First John chap chapter 1 verse 10 goes on to say like this, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Frankly speaking, you see, we all know that we are not perfect, we blunder, and we fall into wrong things, and thus we commit sin. And so nobody can say that we have not sinned. Of course, we are sinners and we need the grace of God to be cleansed and to be forgiven and so that we can have a clean and righteous and a pure life. Here is one of the biggest keys actually to the answered prayer. Is it? Confession to God of any unconfessed sin. You see, before we pray, you see, we need to confess and be cleansed of all unconfessed sin. I don't know everything, you know. But I know what the word all means, you see. Let me ask you a question. When he cleanses you according to his word, then as Bible says, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. As First John chapter 1 verse 9 says, that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so I do not know everything, but I know what the word all means, you see. Let me ask you a question. When He cleanses you according to His word, He cleanses you of all unrighteousness. That's a beautiful thing. That's a marvelous thing. That's a great thing. And uh, that's an awesome thing. What does that leave? What does that leave? Pure righteousness. That's what? Pure righteousness. That's what? Unadulterated righteousness. Unadulterated righteousness. Uncompromised righteousness granted to us. By the living God given to us. Isn't that marvelous thing? That's a powerful thing. You will never be able to be good enough to get this. You see, the pure righteousness by your own works. You cannot work out a pure righteousness 
through your own doing or through your own physical strength and striving and through your own working it out, you cannot reach to that level. For pure righteousness, that's only His word can give us. You see, pure righteousness is only the Lord who can give us and give it unto us. And so it only comes from Him. And this is the promise from His own word. He is the one who gives us the promise and keeps His promise. That if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to give us the pure righteousness that comes from the Lord Jesus, our Maker and our Savior. And so always start your intercession of praying for your needs or for others' needs with getting your heart cleansed according to His Word. You need to start your intercession or prayer by basing on this promise given in the word of God, may, being made pure and cleansed and forgiven of all sins and gaining pure righteousness from the Lord himself. Always start your intercession with getting your heart clean according to his word. Let me ask you one more thing, you see. Did Jesus have unrighteousness? Or did he have pure righteousness? What did Jesus have? You see, Jesus had pure righteousness. When you pray with same righteousness that Jesus walked in, we have the same favor with God that Jesus had on earth. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? So amazing, so powerful. When you pray with the same righteousness that Jesus walked in and we have the same favor, then we will have same favor with God as Jesus had on the earth, you see. If you will just confess your sins and ask forgiveness before you pray, then First John 1 John 1.9, you can quote it loudly. It is written, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now you can begin the thrilling journey of effective prayer. Now you will be able to begin the thrilling journey of effective prayer. As Psalm 103 verse 10 to 12 says, Psalm 103 verse 10 to 12 says, He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. Or has he removed our transgressions from us? May God bless you as you put into practice what you have learned today. And this will help you in effective praying. At least this is the first step that will take you in, into effective praying, give you an entering door into an effective praying, and you will see the marvelous, marvelous results of your prayers being answered. And may God use you as a mighty vessel for His glory and for the furtherance of the kingdom. Thank you for joining me this in this session to learn something about effective praying. God bless you and be with you. And I'll be back with you in the next session. God bless you. Thank you.